Hello, and welcome to Pod Sothoth, the Lovecraft Book Club. This is episode 34, I want to say. Lucky 34. And we are going to be discussing the horror at Red Hook. I'm Todd Beardsley. I have with me Claire Reynolds. Hi. Yeah, the horror is immigration. <laughs> right, the horror. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Little known fact: This story was actually written by Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's not true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just off the top, <laughs> um, uh, we will talk about this story, and we'll talk about it on face value. We'll talk about the text, of course, as you have come to know. <laughs> we will also talk about the subtext. We won't make the entire show about. Maybe we will. I don't know. Well, I don't, that's me a all look. I could say. <laughs> Literally. Maybe it's all about the horror <laughs> of immigration. Uh, I was like, wow, literally every other, well, not literally. I would say literally every other sentence here is just offensive. It opens hard. And it ke- so I will tell you right now, uh, I came into this not really wanting to read this story. Um, but I'll tell you why I read this story at this particular moment in history is because we just got back from London, (laughs) and by just, I mean a little while, five weeks, six weeks, something like that, and while in uh, London, we were participating in the London Lovecraft Festival, and there was a play, uh, a one-act play uh, at the festival called The Atrocities at Arkham, and The Atrocities at Arkham is kind of a (laughs) mix-em-up stage presentation. Olio. In Olio. <laughs> casserole. For those of you who are New York Times crossword right. devotees. <laughs> and that, uh, so Atrocities at Arkham um, is about, it's basically a mashup of Herbert West Reanimator, uh, Dagon, and The Horror Red Hook, which is the only story until just this moment. Um, we have not covered. We covered the two out of the three, but we should. I felt like since we just saw Atrocities at Arkham, you were introduced to Detective Malone and her parents <laughs> after the show, which was great. Um, go ahead. Grant and Sharon, I believe, are their names. They, I believe you are correct. It'd be awesome if they were listening. But yeah. I know that for, you friended for, them on, on, no, on Instagram just, or something. Now I just followed Grant, Grant's art studio on Instagram. Oh, okay. I wouldn't know. I'm not on Instagram or Facebook for religious reasons. Yes. <laughs> so I don't watch TV. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, this is a long way of saying it's like I've been kind of dreading reading this story, but now I felt like I kind of had to, which made me dread it even more. <laughs> and I started recording um, yesterday as we're recording this. I started recording yesterday. I uh, literally fell asleep while recording. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> like mm, that probably wasn't a great take. <laughs> So I started over today, and I banged it all out in one day. And yeah, it is, uh, it is bad and awful and <laughs> slow and boring it's and just, just words offensive upon words upon words uh, to begin with. Um, I do like part seven. Part seven is my jam. Um, that is what that is the end, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole part seven, I have more notes on that than I have okay. on anything else because well, it's we... the most interesting. But anyway, um, Horror Red Hook. <laughs> so you loved it, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> As a racist. How dare you accuse me of loving it, Todd? <laughs> uh, it, and not, uh, okay, so you want uh, let's start off with like, let's, for people who aren't. Mm-hmm gonna listen to you right read the story for 53 minutes in a row yeah which they should because you have a lovely voice hey i okay we'll save that for later we'll, we'll put a pin in that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we can get into the story um do you want to say anything about about else about london because london was awesome it was great or, i want to go back there and i want to live there <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah it was it was wonderful we found a vampire bar across the street from the did. That festival was great. venue yeah um we saw hugh and oh yes that's right Na- Na- oh Na- man i forget Na- nan 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 i think nan you're right you Am nailed I? it okay she was a delight i liked her very much Hugh, you were fine but <laughs> <Nan>. <laughs> <laughs> he was acceptable so 
anyway, uh, let's let's get into the story. Did you want to talk about you? You look like you have something you want to say about the story. No, or no, I, I made my Tucker way. Carlson joke, yeah. so I'm done. <laughs> you're done. You're out. <laughs> I guess if you were trying to write a private eye detective noir novel, but you were too racist to be able to <laughs> pay attention to it. <laughs> you just keep getting distracted by how racist yes. you are. This is what would happen on your first draft. Uh, but he's H.P. motherfucking Lovecraft, and he can get it published in Weird Tales, so we have to know about it now. Let me start with New York. New York City. Yes. New York City. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to revive Board of Bit that we did in the first, like, five episodes of the Lovecraft Travel Agency. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. So let's take a trip, shall we, to Red Hook, New York, which is part of Brooklyn, as mentioned in the story. It is uh, near, It's about 15 minutes from Flatbush, which is, like, basically the other side of Brooklyn, uh, which is where Lovecraft lived. Lovecraft lived in Flatbush for about a year, and then he lived in Brooklyn Heights for about a year, and then he fled because he hated it so much. <laughs> and and by the way, he lived there in like 1924 to 1926, which is like kind of a fucking awesome time to be living in New York. I mean, he is just the biggest fucking stick in the mud, is he not? I mm-hmm. mean, like there must have been so many sure. interesting, cool people living there. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand. <laughs> that it can be overwhelming to be somewhere where there's a lot of different languages and people that don't look like you and people that don't talk like you and think like you or eat like you. But get the fuck out. Like, what? <laughs> what a... Just so angry. What, what a <laughs> pussy. Pardon my word. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you mean And I mean pansy. that colloquially. No, I mean, no, 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 no. Not that. I mean, fine. What a, just what an asshole he is. Yes. Yes. Everyone has an asshole. Yes. Yeah, big time. Um, I mean, I just can't get over that he was there, like, in literally the Roaring Twenties. Yes. In, like, the yeah. capital of, I'm going to go ahead and say, like, the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, and so uh, he lived there uh, with his wife, which he had, mm-hmm. uh, named Sonia Green. <laughs> um, she, w- it was her apartment in Flatbush that he moved into. And then she threw, there was a series of business miscalculations on her part and probably their part and probably a lot of people's part. It's probably not entirely her fault. Um, And she had a nervous breakdown and, as you do, (laughs) go to Cincinnati, (laughs) leaving Lovecraft behind. (laughs) (laughs) And so then he lit, so he moved, he had to move out of the Flatbush apartment because he couldn't afford it. And he moved to Brooklyn Heights and he lived there a year. Um, he had, he had friends in New York. He wasn't like, you know, completely stranger in a strange land, by the way. Like he already knew people who lived there because he was like a writer and published and stuff. And this is where published writers live. (laughs) So, um, you know, he had a support system and everything, but, uh, he ended up not being able to take it anymore. Came, (laughs) came back, came back home to Providence and never left. Yep. And so this is one of two stories that I know of. There may be more, but they're, So this and Cool Air, that takes place in Greenwich Village. So here's the thing is I, if you, unless you're talking like maybe two to three podcasts ago, I have no memory (laughs) of anything that we have ever read or talked about. (laughs) I'm not even sure that we're married. (laughs) Can I I suggest a podcast and some court documents for you? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this happens all the time. So I'll be like, "Oh, you remember in that once in blah blah blah." And I'm like, "We have we haven't read that." He's like, "Yeah, we had we had like a two hour discussion about it." I'm like, oh, okay, well. So okay, so if you have a longer, slightly longer memory, you may remember, dear listener. Uh, cool Air also takes place in New York. Anyway, there is a really good article about Lovecraft's life in New York uh, by the Gotham Center, which is like a historical society for New York. Um, I will link it in the show notes and it's great so remember when (laughs) so all of part one is just setting right so it's it's uh malone is like ambling down the street oh god i see your trap now you're trying to get me to say the names of the towns (laughs) (laughs) that doesn't matter oh boy no so i had to look it up uh, because it's shepashet shepashet is what i landed shepashet Okay. What I landed on, what I believe I have learned from the internet. Tuskogue? 
ah, that is a point of deep Rhode Islander <laughs> identity. Um, it is pronounced Pasco. Pasco. Okay. But with like, you, you kind of imply Pasco, the G. Kind of like a Pasco GH. Not Almost? even not no, no. that's even that's too hard. It's like okay. the memory of a G is Pasco. at the end. Pasco, like kind, sort of okay. like I, anyway. I landed on Pasco because okay. it's way easier to say. Yeah, and yeah. there are newscasters Ooh, in socket. And so anyway, he's walking uh, from Shepeshit, which is where he's living. This is all like present day. That's right. That's right. He's in. He's in okay. Shepeshit. He's walking to Pasco to buy magazines, and he gets into Pasco, which is like so. Sli- you see, I was. <laughs> In, living in Shepeshit, walk into Pasco to buy magazines. Uh-huh. I, I don't no idea what accent that was. Uh, so yeah, so this town is like slightly more built up than Shepeshit. Like Shepeshit is like super rustic and rural, and everything's made of wood, right? And, uh, but Pasco is like more bustling, and things are made of brick. And so he comes down there, and he's like, "Oh God, brick houses, brick buildings, oh the horror, the horror." The horror. Like, apparently he's got brickophobia or whatever that is. Um, so he freaks out. Everyone's, a, and he's like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then there's, like, a little bit of flashback of, my name is, is Tom, Thomas Malone. And I saw some shit in New York when I was a cop. And that's basically it. That's part one. Um, so, but here's, here's the thing. Here's one of many reasons why I hate this story. <laughs> it is written in a tense like a very strange tense i think especially for lovecraft where there is no there is no unnamed narrator mm-hmm. and so like i don't know so th- there's no one to tell the story which i've found is like a really handy crutch to have when mm. you're reading lovecraft because like he's already a little bit impenetrable and he uses yeah. archaic la- language and all that having the framing of a narrator like yeah. i feel like i've noticed because of its absence it super helps yeah, when I you're trying to read it Yeah, you're at least loud. removing one layer of of distance between, yeah. you know. We have omniscience. We can see inside Malone's head. But there's no the, no one is telling the story. It's not like even a, like in a, a, a thing on the doorstep where it's all written basically as like a suicide note. <laughs> we don't even have that. We have no framing for We this. don't have an unnamed narrator to be pretentious. We just have... The story itself. <laughs> well, and may, you know, <laughs> may, maybe this is a message. Maybe we've gotten a secret message from Lovecraft saying like, oh, I, actually, me, Howard, I'm, I'm the narrator. And <laughs> all of these things I'm saying about the people of New York that are awful, like, that's me. Just FYI. Like, I just wanted to make that absolutely clear. Because there's no narrator. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, part two. What goes on in part two, Claire? To me, the story is just... Basically, the cops in this town are just harassing the shit out of these immigrants that live there. Yep, mostly uh, West Asian. Yeah, busting in. It's like I'm. I keep hearing like the the end of uh, Layla by Eric Clapton. Well, it's not Eric Clapton. It's uh, his whole band, right? What's the, the name of his band? Uh, I can't Eagles. Remember. No, God, you're even worse than I am. I don't know. All right. You know where it like, Run it's DMC? Like, it's like, no. It's like every <laughs> Derek and the Dominoes or maybe something. I don't know. Every mafia movie, there's like. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we can drop it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like just the cops coming in, busting shit down. And uh, that's just what I kept picturing. Like they're just going in there with no cause, whatever, busting mm-hmm. shit up. You with know, Layla playing. Cho- yeah, with Layla playing, <laughs> chopping up, uh, you know, barrels full of whiskey. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, very like Elliot Ness kind yeah. of untouchable style. Yes, except it's like barrels full of rice, rice. and grains that <laughs> yeah. they need to feed their children. <laughs> he just keeps busting in here thinking that he's... He doesn't give any specific reason why they think these people are doing anything okay. wrong. Now, he does say, like, their crime happens all of the time. Now, obviously, he's... But what are... The, what, the, the, whomever is relating the story in this context, But what specific examples is he giving? Like, I'm, I probably... Maybe I missed it. Oh, le, oh let I me tell you. I know there's the kidnappings, but, like... That's way later, yeah. Yeah. Visible offenses are as varied as the local dialects and run the gamut from the smuggling of rum and prohibited aliens through diverse stages of lawlessness and obscure vice 
to murder and mutilation in their most abhorrent guises. So there's like murder happening on the streets. It's very similar <laughs> to the state of affairs say, in Chicago, if you asked any Republican. Right, right, right. Yes, it's a hellhole, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> in the meantime, like... <laughs> Magnificent mile. <laughs> so I, I don't know, just in my head, I'm like, what? why would you, somebody murder somebody else on the street? What, why do you There's then no need mystery. to go bust? Yeah, why do you need to go bust in? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I have literally no notes on part two. <laughs> because that was, so when I was recording yesterday, this is the part I fell asleep in. <laughs> Uh, and I deleted uh, it too. Oh, you'll never hear it. You'll never hear me just trail off and uh, yeah, <laughs> into, into slumber. <laughs> I know I was so stupid when I deleted it. Um, he talks about uh, Black Sabbath, um, which is rad. Uh-huh. The band which lives there. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, Smash Cut. How do you pronounce this dude's last name? Because I looked it up. I <laughs> and would, I have well, a guess. In the and I in stuck the play with that we saw, they were calling him Soy Dam. I think they were. I'd say. I'd say sui dumb. I said Sodom. <laughs> or okay. s- not Sodom. Okay. But sounds like Sodom, which is why I think he picked it, by the way. Oh. Um, su- Sodom. I Sudom. thought Sudom in the Wikipedia is- it said why he picked it. Oh, I don't know. I didn't okay. read the Wikipedia. Oh. I don't right. cheat. Okay. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> you always read the Wikipedia. I didn't read okay. it for this. So how do you pronounce it? I mean, it's supposed to be Dutch. So. It's supposed to be Dutch. And I looked it up and like the S-U-Y and the... Anyway. This is a boring conversation. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, I don't even remember. But And matter. you never listen to the podcast, so you'll never I know. Don't. Well, it's not because, I, yeah, I certainly don't listen to the ones with me on it. What do you like? Because you're smarter than me. So <laughs> I'd say Soydem just because that's Let's go with Soydem. Yeah. Let's go with Soydem. Okay. We'll have we'll have two pronunciations on one podcast. It doesn't it's matter. perfect. Yeah. It's not like someone's gonna go on Twitter and say J'accuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not famous enough for that. Now on that we are agreed. So I very like okay, so basically there's this rich Dutch guy uh-huh. living in Red Rich Hook. Rich-ish. Rich-ish, okay. Yeah. Rich enough where his relatives, he starts acting weird and his relatives are trying to get him declared insane. Right. So that he'll stop spending his money. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to spend his principal, mm-hmm. is what it yes. says, I believe, uh, on the importation of, of French and British books. Yeah. And um, yeah, he became a case, right, when the relatives show up and, and are trying to sue. Apparently, like, the local cops are very helpful to private detectives mm-hmm. in this I world. I noticed that, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, which, sure, they're all on the take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you besmirch <laughs> our boys in blue? From the 1920s from the Red 19- Hook. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Where they basically admit all of the time in the story that they're just like uh. <laughs> busting the balls of every brown person they can find. <laughs> Like he's just been lurking around this church, and he—I think he's got a couple properties or something. And basically, like all I can tell is just that he's consorting with these people, mm-hmm. and then maybe they hear weird noises at night, mm-hmm. and so therefore <laughs> <laughs> they think that he's involved in some kind of uh, illicit activities with these people. I don't know. Well, at the end of part three, they, he got dragged into court and he like put on, he's like, oh, no, no, I can turn this off. Like, I'm just fucking around. Yeah. <laughs> and so oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. He pulls a switcheroo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do want to point out, which I think th- there's a sentence in here that is, I'm pretty sure, exact opposite of of that which is inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. (laughs) Indeed, it would not have been too much to say that the old scholar's particular circle coincided almost perfectly with the worst (laughs) of the organized cliques, which smuggled ashore certain nameless and unclassified Ah, Asian dregs, wisely turned back by Ellis Island. Yes. In the teeming rookeries of Parker (laughs) Palace, since renamed, where Soydem had his basement flat, there had grown up a very unusual colony of unclassified... And then it just goes on. Right. So, <laughs> like... Wisely turned away. If you had the upside down <laughs> mm-hmm. of the Statue of Liberty, yeah. that's what would be on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So basically what uh, certain elements of our right. American society like think is Like something in the neighborhood now. of like 40-ish yeah. percent of the voting yeah. public. So he comes through his 
almost certainly illegal investigations, uh, Malone <laughs> comes to the conclusion. You just can't get this guy. That Robert Soydum is an arch fiend and an adversary. He uh-huh. is the Moriarty uh-huh. <laughs> to Malone's uh-huh. Sherlock. I really like the idea that Robert Soydum is like barely, barely <laughs> aware of him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and I have no Police notes. methods are varied and ingenious. <laughs> Are they? Oh, wait, I do have a note. I do have a note on part three. Derp. Yeah, I have a big note on part three. So mentioned in part three is uh, among the uh, the immigrant population are people who are suspected of being Yazidi. Oh, yeah. So I looked it up. I've never heard of that before. Have you? I feel it, like they were mentioned in... They're in the news. Oh, no, I'm just saying I thought that they had been mentioned in the... Um, Chronicle? No, not the Lovecraft. Lovecraft Investigations? Yeah, Lovecraft Investigations. I oh, could have really? sworn that they were mentioned. In oh, there, maybe. But maybe not. Well, then okay. shame on them because <laughs> the Yazidi are not devil worshippers. Um, it is a, it's a tiny one, 1.5 million or so <laughs> religion yeah. um, that is like an off. Sh- it's like a very early Islam mm-hmm. and um, I- Islam-ish. It's Abramic. Yeah. Um, the, the distinguishing feature, the reason why ignorant people think that they are devil worshippers is because they have a creation myth and I very much want to see like a Neil Gaiman version of this in, in the comics. They have a creation myth of, um, you know, a very Abrahamic God creates, you know, Adam and Eve, like specifically in garden of Eden and all that. But their creation myth like takes one step back and talks about like the angels and stuff like that, which is like very common, right? Mm-hmm. In, in, in Islamic um, mythology, right? The, the the principal angel, um, God said to him, uh, you should you must bow before Adam. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And so the Yazidis are on that guy's side. <laughs> oh, okay. And so it's a okay. very kind of Lucifer sort of figure. Uh-huh. Um, and I mean Lucifer in the modern, right. enlightened right, right, right. way. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they're very much not devil. Like yeah. the dude's an angel, right? And, yeah. and, they, and the reason why is because it's like, no, actually that guy is the one who's like most devoted to God because mm-hmm. there were other angels who did. Um, but God had like an earlier command of like, you know, you can only kneel to me. Mm-hmm. And he's the only guy who remembered <laughs> the first and therefore better uh-huh. command. And so it's a thing, right? I am shocked that I tell you that <laughs> people accused a minority population of being devil worshippers. Yeah, I know. We have never so this seen is anything the thing. like, like this before. These also, pe- there's nothing wrong with be- whatever. Yeah. Worship whoever you want. I don't care as long as you don't hurt anybody else. But <laughs> it's it's just <laughs> funny how this uh-huh. is a constant. Yeah, it's throughout. constant. Yeah. Now, in Lovecraft's time, now this is one of the very few times where I'll say like, ah, oh, product of his time. Because... Almost universally in the Western world, when viewing the Yazidis, um, they're hearing the stories from the conquering Muslims, right. <laughs> who yeah. also believe that they're her- heretical. Yeah. Um, and so pretty much everyone at the time, if you were not a Yazidi or good friends with a Yazidi, you would probably assume that they were in fact devil worshippers in a very classical, like, worshipping mm-hmm. Satan sort of way. Not in a you know, witchy sort of way, right? right. They're not. <laughs> right. Um, so, so this is my, this is the only time I will excuse <laughs> Lovecraft's ignorance because it was probably pretty common, even yeah. among yeah, they didn't liberal have, people, right? You know, Wikipedia. They didn't have Wikipedia. Up. No, no, not at all. And it's a tiny little religion and not because, because A, they don't have a missionary tradition, and B, they've been the subject of genocide for, like, I don't know, all of the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most notably in 2014. So. Got it. All right. Anyway, <laughs> you seem uncomfortable. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just remembering <laughs> this thing where, okay, so I'm looking in here of where he's been harassing this guy and all of the immigrants. And then... They have what Malone would have unearthed. Could he have worked continuously right. on the case? We shall never know. As it was, a stupid conflict a stupid between conflict. city and federal authority suspended the investigations for several months. Yeah. I can only assume that was that was constitutional. Right. That that was like the Department of Justice being like, oh, you need to stop harassing <laughs> these people who are right here. <laughs> That's why you're on the show. You zoomed in on on the legal kerfuffle. Oh, so good. Thank you, finally, for some lawyering for my lawyer wife. Finally. (laughs) 
Okay, so I think we've uncovered by part four. Malone is a bastard. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah and, so they think there are... <laughs> yeah, there's nothing happening. That's the thing. It's just guys busting in doors. And there are some kids who've been kidnapped. Yeah, also, incidentally, there was a rash of kidnapping. <laughs> yeah, but I will say... And then I quote, most of the victims were ch- young children of the lowest class. Lowest class. But. I mean, normally no one would care. the increasing number of, of disappearances have worked up them. a settlement of the strongest fury. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it would, it's, I wonder how many that is. Like, What's is the it threshold? 10, 20? Probably 10 would be my guess. Like if you're talking Once about like. double digits. Yeah. Then the cops That's when like, the newspapers well, start paying people, attention. Yeah. So anyway. Which is literally the only reason why they're actually giving a shit at all about oh, these yeah. kidnappings. Absolutely. Then Soydam all of a sudden starts being awesome, looking younger and hotter, and yep. dressing better, and coming out more, and, and, his, and being his more hair's, charming. His hair's darker, uh-huh. but without dye. Uh, right? Yeah. Like, how would you know, <laughs> Malone? He's a detective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't running down the side of his face like Giuliani's. <laughs> I assume it's the fashion in New York. That's why it happened to Giuliani. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, great moments in American history. <laughs> why can't I look forward to drunk history 20 years 2044. from now? <laughs> um, Basically, he's like, he's going, he just broke up. Yeah. And he's been going to the gym. Yeah. And he's been <laughs> dressing I, better. <laughs> I just keep thinking, oh, I remember what it was. It, the, it, he says something about like every time he goes out, like something is just a little bit better, oh, a little yeah. bit better. Uh-huh. And I just keep thinking of like a like a quick hit montage of him right. just like walking out his door <laughs> every bit, day, uh-huh. like and one thing is different, one thing is different, one thing. And then at the end, he's dressed like the voiceover directors in Toast of London. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just like got, like nipple shots out. He's got That's... hat sideways. <laughs> Yeah, can you hear me, Stephen? Yeah, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. Where's then he gets engaged. He gets engaged, and it's and it's in the paper. To a somewhat well-to-do lady, a young woman of excellent position, Cornelia Gerritsen. Cornelia Gerritsen of Bayside. And distantly related to the elderly bridegroom-elect. That's of right. Of course, is that how you did it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, a, di, see, I think the distantly related is meant to be <laughs> an excuse. It's like, no, no, it's not his cousin. It's a second uh, cousin. Because yeah. <laughs> it would be weird to marry your cousin, right? right? Ew, yeah, right. Right? Right? Like the way they think. So then after, um, you know, he gets cooler and cooler, so soy- um, then, you know, he get, like you say, he gets engaged. And then there's the other thing. There's the kidnapping. And, and so that causes them to raid one of they raid his, the church. One of his pl- it says to a raid on one of Soydam's Parker Place houses. That's right. That's right. There indeed, no stolen child was found. No, despite the tales of screams and the red sash picked up in the area way. <laughs> but the painting, the, and then they go on to describe like all these crazy paintings and runes and yep. yada yada that's all over the walls. And then a bunch place. of like yeah, like and a, just like straight up demonology mm-hmm. at this point. Um, big list of names, which I yeah. kind of pronounced most of. Uh, there's pentagrams painted all over the place, and that's it. All right, so. Yeah, and, and more racism. And more racism, obviously. Yeah. So part five happens, uh, and it's great. So the wedding. Somebody's getting married. I, you know, I, <laughs> I had such a wide range of choices since we watched Four Weddings and a Funeral. I'm sure there's songs in that. There's Wedding Singer. There's so many choices. Somebody's getting married. Which, which dropped. Somebody, 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 somebody. Cool. Um, so uh, it happens. It's great. It's not, you know, wonderful. Right. Enough <laughs> to make the society pages. It's enough to make the society pages. It's a solid page from the society mm-hmm. from the social register yes. is in attendance at this yes. wedding. So at least 24 to 25 notables. Yeah. yeah. And then they um, they go on their honeymoon. They get uh-huh. on a boat and they're they're going going to Europe. And then all hell broke loose. I yeah. guess they didn't even get out of the they're harbor. Not, like, yeah. <laughs> they're not. They're even just in the open barely ocean. Yeah. out. <laughs> There's an attack on the boat. Um, pirates, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> And there's a scream and then a bunch of stuff from this from this tramp steamer that pulls up alongside this cruiser and uh, turns out. Yeah. So a sailor breaks. In, OK, so a scream comes from the Soydem stateroom. Mm-hmm. Sailor breaks down the door. 
goes mad. It <laughs> just goes immediately <laughs> insane. Yes. Shrieks and starts running around <laughs> and has to be put in now, irons. I, it's not jet. So I take this as just like some kind of critical failure on a sanity roll <laughs> in <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. Um, and it wasn't just the presence of the bodies, you know, because like when the doctor comes in, shit's disappearing, but not completely disappeared. Yeah. You know, like things, you know, and things are like going out yeah. the portal and all that stuff. Uh-huh. So like, I'm sure this sailor got like the brunt of it. Like yeah, he yeah, saw yeah. all of the evil. And the doctor's total evidence for the fact that he did not see anything is the fact that he like, remained sane. Check me out. Yeah. Still sane. <laughs> Obviously, I saw nothing. As proof, the doctor <laughs> points to his continued sanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I assume literally pointing at his brain. Yes, it's like, still okay. Obviously, I saw nothing. <laughs> so, um, so, so anyway, there's a there's a murder. There's a murder most foul. Um, a tramp steamer. Soy- Soyam is dead. Mrs. Soyam, Soyam is dead. Soydam. Mrs. Soydam is dead. Um, everybody's dead, right, in the stateroom. But this is where it's like, oh, you have my interest now, Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> this pirate, the swarthy pirate... Mm-hmm. <laughs> hands a note over <laughs> to the yes. captain <laughs> and says, hey, I ha- it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I have a note. <laughs> and the note says, basically, from Soydom, it's like, hey, uh, no matter what happens, you're going to have to give my body over to th- whoever holds this note, <laughs> which is awesome, by yeah. the way. I need that perfect in my mur- will. Yeah, perfect murder. <laughs> like, and the, ca- the captain's just like, well. The no. card says moves. The card says moves. <laughs> Sorry, the card says moops. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they nodded rather helplessly and led the way to the state yep. stateroom. All right. Okay, guess you can't do anything about that. <laughs> I mean, it's international waters. There's no law. <laughs> it's supposed to be captain's law, but the captain's probably like, you know what? Actually, this guy's fine. kind of a douche anyway. Go ahead, get him off the boat. <laughs> Wait, you guys will leave if you just all you take want, all you want is the body. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so they take they take him. They take they don't take his wife. In, in my they head, drain his wife. Yes, I which li- is cool. Like that, I like that part. Yeah, that, that was is, that was. But cool. I would also like to imagine that this note is written in crayon <laughs> <laughs> with like, charcoal and totally misspelled. <laughs> yeah, like meatloaf's note right. in Rocky Horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah so anyway then they yes you're right they drain his wife which they I drain his wife into wine bottles which is also awesome yeah why, I, and why uh because it's goth as fuck that's why oh just for that <laughs> <Yes>. okay <laughs> just because <laughs> you think that they're like I can't believe these guys are letting us do this. Like, <laughs> all right, what else can we do to fuck with them? All right, let's, uh, you know what? She's already dead. Let's just, come on. Let's, let's just vampires, right? <laughs> 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 I want to know, yeah, I want to know their story. Uh-huh, I want, I uh-huh. want to doodle doodle yeah. and just like a zoom in on how they yeah. got this job. And I, okay, so if I, you read the Wikipedia, there's an author who wrote a novelette from, the perspective of like no one way. of these guys that worked for Soydom. <coughs> oh, for Soydom. Yeah. But one of the pirates? No, no I don't okay. think so. I think it's just, just somebody. Yeah. Somebody that, okay. Only, yeah. Well, that'd be, in, that'd be I know. neat to read. I was kind of interested in that. Yeah. So they take his body, they drain his wife, and they're Audi. Okay, part six. So Malone mm-hmm. is Tossing Remains immigrants blissfully again. Blissfully unaware of yeah. what has gone down at sea. Mm-hmm. Still tossing immigrants because now this time some blue eyed Norwegian children have been. Oh, that's disappeared. your that's your theory? Yes. Is that it's, well, no, that's what it now says. Now that it's white people. No, 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 yeah. no. I know that it says that it's yeah. Norwegian, but your theory presupposes. Well, it's just like why else would he have pointed it <laughs> out? That's all I'm saying. Your theory is that they didn't care about the kidnappings up until the Norwegian kids got. Now. now, Norwegians, you know, in the time still, were, yes, yes. you know, there was racism still. But there still. was levels of, yeah. yeah. Malone had for weeks been urging his colleagues to attempt a general cleanup. <laughs> uh, That's right. <laughs> yeah. They, so, had a, they had a plan. It was build a wall. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> make, in, like, part two. <laughs> make Dagon pay for it. <laughs> make Dagon pay for it. That's right. So, they... 
bust in the Parker Place, mm-hmm. which is, I still don't understand what that is. It's not Park Park Place. It's not Park Place from Monopoly. <laughs> it's in Brooklyn. It's in but Red it, Hook. Okay, so, but it's owned by... It's like a. It's owned by Soydem. Yeah, it's like it, a. It's a. It's like a. It's like a block of houses. Okay, all right. Doors were battered in. Stragglers arrested. And candle lighted rooms forced to disgorge unbelievable throngs. Yeah, it gets real culty here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, here, and that's this what is, he this says, though. But this could just be. These are just people practicing their native <laughs> religions. Like, right. <laughs> so I took the. I didn't. I took this as like, oh, this is like down the middle Lovecraftian cultists, right? These yeah. are these are the these are the yeah. one health cultist enemies right. in every Lovecraft game. Yeah, <laughs> where it's just oh, they're just strange and different. It's not that hard to yeah. get rid of them. The acolytes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just the acolytes. You know, they get a doom when they come out, and then you just like <laughs> grease <Waste> them. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did we have we talked about this? I think we talked about it on episode two where. Our theory that um, Night of the Zealot is you're the monster. Oh, like yeah. Like the players are the monster. <laughs> <laughs> because all you're doing is just like uh-huh. murdering, quote, cultists uh-huh. <laughs> who are just people. We're just they're hanging like, out in their They're town. like a doctor yeah. and a librarian. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we talked about that. I don't know. Anyway, if we didn't, I'm leaving it. I don't care. All right. Tell me if we talked about this already. I thought we did, but I have no memory of anything. So Right. So yeah, so they're they're tossing uh, Parker Place, and there's a door, and you know he's gonna cop it. He's gonna he's gonna bash it open, and he bashes it open with a stool, but it actually opens harder from the other side. So it's very so. so it's reminded me a lot of an excellent movie from the '80s called The Gate, uh, where two kids <laughs> accidentally open a gate to hell, and that's basically. I see that. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch it again, though. It's quite excellent. It's Canadian, and uh, it's got, it's not a child actor. It's like an, a now adult actor in it, maybe from like Stranger okay, Things or something. This, I don't know. I think that yeah. there's, this does <laughs> ring a bell, maybe. The Gate is excellent. It is an excellent, excellent Lovecraftian in this style of Lovecraft, um, in the in the like the spooky cultist style. I can definitely see my kids accidentally opening a gate to hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and the demons would like come out and then look and they would be like Ah no, you, you got this. Never mind. <laughs> so there's plenty of evil I here. Just, um, I, I I I got something on the stove. I gotta check it. <laughs> so he busts open he the door and in. he gets sucked in and then pop. Right into literal hell. Yeah, <laughs> is what happens. And this part is awesome. Like this is great. This is this is like Her- Hieronymus Bosch, right? That's all what's going on here. It's just like horror after horror after horror, right? Um, like the eyeless giant things and the. If there's um, anyone out there who <laughs> thinks that Todd should watch Supernatural, I write us. I watch Supernatural. I watched half of season one. Yeah, that's, that's like <laughs> not the good part. I know at it's all. like one thirtieth of Supernatural. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's there's a scene of a giant with a half eaten thing. Mm-hmm. You know what that is? That's our pal Goya. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. You're right. And Saturn oh, eating yeah. his son once again. Yeah. Lovecraft loves this painting, and so do he I. Does. Yeah, <laughs> and you've got. Incubi and succubae. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Howling do. Howling praise to Hecate. <laughs> Headless moon calves. Right. Goats <laughs> leaping. <laughs> like some cats living together. Uh-huh. Mass hysteria. I have a very emotional connection to succubi <laughs> because, <laughs> so I play a little video game <laughs> that I've oh, been yes, playing yes, since yes, 1984 yes. called NetHack. <laughs> Where and he hacks the net. Nope, it's not that. A hack is in hack and slash. So it's a du- it's a D and D simulator. It's all ASCII. It's freaking awesome. I will give you a link in the show notes. I play online. I'm not going to tell you my name. In that hack, there there are succubi. Four twenty four twenty sixty nine sixty nine. It's not. It will be though. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are succubi and and incubi. Collectively known as the Fukubai because <laughs> they are very gendery, and if you are a male character and you run into a succubus, um, you have a chance to uh, bone down, as they say, <laughs> and uh, and then get an experience level. 
get just like get experience out of the gate. So you spend like when you find your first succubus, you're like, oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen. And then, like, when you get more and more experience at the game, you're like, oh, yeah, I have to farm the succubus. I have to just, like, make sure that she does not die. So don't let your dog near her because the dog will tear her up. <laughs> and as long as she doesn't die, she can. you keep getting this chance at another experience point. Oh, I see. So you just keep her prisoner uh-huh. so that you can have sex with her to get experience And get experience. Points. Okay. Right. That, that, Look, that never made you uncomfortable? Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's because she's ASCII. a demon. And, yeah. and a demon. <laughs> an ASCII demon. In, yeah. An ASCII demon in NetHack is merely a sexy, sexy ampersand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I am an at sign because obviously <laughs> at means human. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah. So, so like, as soon as I saw the word incubi and succubi, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to get some experience. <laughs> Let me tell you about my fantasies about ASCII <laughs> succubus. <laughs> I mean, I, here's the thing. I've seen you playing NetHack, uh-huh. and there's no glimmer of life in you while you're doing it. You're <laughs> no, just no, no. staring it's... deadly at the thing, typing in th- various, <laughs> like, there's nothing on. I don't know if, if anyone, <laughs> out, I'm thinking of my parents listening. They have no idea what you're talking about. No. Like, I'll, I'll, it's I'll literally have a link the just notes. computer commands. Like, Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no pictures. It's a game that predates the internet. The net in NetHack means internet because there was an older game <laughs> called Hack that was not aware of the internet. <laughs> There's a mention of the a, a- Japan. Um, it's a monster. I had to look it up. Basically, it is imagine a satyr, right? Mm-hmm. Or a fawn, right? A little, little goat horns on a person. Um, but then imagine a satyr version of a mermaid. That's what that is. Oh. So it's like got like goat features on the top, fish features on the bottom, okay, people features in the middle. Okay. <laughs> That's what that is. Okay, sure, yeah. why not? Whatever. Yeah, yeah sounds- I mean it sounds cool as fuck. Like it like if you met that and you're in like a D and D campaign, like a proper D and D campaign, and you're for some reason in the ocean, this thing's gonna fuck you up. Like it's got horns. And mm-hmm, sure, it'll live forever yeah. underwater. It's not going to be incredibly <laughs> awkward <laughs> and, and not built for whatever <laughs> environment it is in. Any environment that it's in is going to be it's awkward wrong. for it. <laughs> no, I think it's a master fighter. I think this is a terrible monster to meet. <laughs> You think this thing is awful and bad? Yeah. Just He's going to be perpetually like, clumsy. Why, the Why am I here? Why? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> all right. Basically, yeah. it turns out it was just a dream. It was all a dream. No. No? Uh, no. That is, I'm going to shut that well, down. Well, we don't actually. Wrong. <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> He's supposed to think it's a dream, but it's not actually a dream. Here's the thing. My point. Here's my read on Malone. It is convenient for him, for him to believe it is a dream. Oh, it's his, like, uh, what's it's that It's his called? PTSD. Yeah. What's that called? Re- not yeah, rationalization. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. his rationalization. Like, and this was this this feature, which I think is actually really clever from Lovecraft. This is like maybe the only clever thing in this, um, where he sets it up in the first in, in part one, where Malone's like, "Oh yeah, 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 everything's fine. Why don't you send me upstate and not like a fucking padded cell?" Because he's like yeah. thinking about it, right? Yeah. He's like, "I know what I saw is completely insane, and I know it was real. And if I tell these people, I am insane." Yeah. And that is the end of the Tommy Malone story. Yeah, and this is the time of where this is. These yeah, are the you days would get when, locked away. Yeah, but they're looking for reasons to lock people up. Yeah, especially the Irish. Yes. So it was a dream, but it definitely wasn't. Like, he literally okay. went to some portal. So Lovecraft has the dreamlands, like, right there. Like, <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. So my... And... In my experience of, like, every Lovecraft video game, role-playing game, whatever, there are two places. There is the real world and there are the dreamlands. And there are not, like, many other dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. That's just it. Those are the two. And so I prefer to believe that where he went was the dreamlands. My thinking, actually, is the other side of the lake on the (laughs) where Sarnath is. Because that's uh-huh. where all this shit happens. And 
they've got like these crazy gods there and like we know that the dreamlands is like full of gods and stuff sure. anyway listen to sense. the doom that came to sarnath if you don't know what i'm talking about but that is like that and the cats of Ulthar are the two like major dreamland stories that we've covered on this podcast there are way more but anyway that is my fan theory. My, that is my boring fan theory that oh, nobody cares yeah. about. Okay, but we're not. Oh, you're right. There's still more to go in six. Mm-hmm. All right, you go, you go ahead. I got nothing else for six. Six is just like no, scene it's... after scene. Like six is I the should... coolest part, but I have no notes written down because oh. it's just the cool part. Well, yeah. So it's then all heavy metal Malone album covers is down there in yeah. this whatever, and he sees uh, the the corpse uh-huh. of of soydom but old soydom not fakely not hot man not about hot, town yeah, yeah. soydom but he's running <laughs> dressed but, like Clint Cl- Fandango yeah Clint Fandango soydom but he's <laughs> instead he's, he's toast yes <laughs> running <laughs> And he's a corpse and he's been yeah. resuscitated it's, 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 so yeah. like i guess like his youthiness like here's the I'm thing. Like, like I can imagine singing. the magical system yeah. where like he has traded whatever you know, and he's like, "Oh, make me young and hot and like rad and everything." And they do. They make him into Clem Fandango. But the moment he dies, mm-hmm. his corpse reverts. That's yeah. my thinking. Yeah. And now he's dead, and then he gets resurrected yeah. <laughs> again. But I couldn't understand. Okay, so for whatever reason, he then has one last burst of like heroism what's he doing i guess He's booking to this pedestal right so do you think that malone interprets it as as the soydom corpse going and like knocking it into the gross waters oh, but really true. soydom is like look at that super hot lady i gotta have her and yeah goes, or i'm trips. gonna get on yeah. this throne and yeah. be the ruler of this right. crazy yeah. underworld whatever happens something goes Poorly. I think he just crit fails. And he trips. <laughs> he trips and pushes the pushes the whole thing <laughs> into, into the, the water. water. And that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. And this is why the the other reason why I thought of Sarnath, because there's a lot of like putting, you know, idols and gods like into lakes and burying them that way, right? So that's why Yeah. I, I just put it together now. It's like, why does it remind me of Sarnath? But that's why. Yeah, that makes sense. So <laughs> So, in the Dreamland. Yeah, that whole part, like, it looks cool as hell. Like, I really like all the, I like the writing in it. Yeah. I like the imagery. I like all of it. Like I say, it's like every everything is a heavy metal album cover. <laughs> and then part seven is basically, like, the wrap-up section. Soydom was evidently a leader in extensive man-smuggling operations. <laughs> man-smuggling. <laughs> He's man-smuggling those weird seamen. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, they, they bust into the place and there's all kinds of crazy things there. There's like solitary prisoners with infants of disturbingly strange appearances. Right. That burst, that die in sunlight. And then yes. there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a And then Latin the doctors phrase. are like, well, it's for Probably the best. For the best. Yeah, so <laughs> well, and I'm assuming they have like horns and goat feet and I shit, guess, you know, yeah. because um, there is a... There's the line. Oh, you're going to give the... I I thought Todd will look this up. I don't need to look <laughs> it the, up. Is there a translation in the text? Uh, no. No, there isn't. So I will give you the translation right now. Uh, and this is thanks to the Encyclopedia Britannica, ninth edition, published in 1902. <laughs> Which, by the way, that is a the thing. the ninth edition? Mm-hmm. Wow. And that, that is a thing you can read, by the way, on the okay. internet called 1902encyclopedia.com. And it's... Awesome and oh, that terrible. Is neat. Yeah. So anyway, the they have a section. They have a translation, and the translation is: I am going to tell it to you right now. It's from Del Rio, who is a uh, theologian, a 17th century, 16th, 17th century theologian who was like crazy hot for demons, and he wrote uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I see Congresso, which I assume uh-huh. is. It's, Congress. It's basically so. It's tra- <laughs> do you want the translation or do you want the like transliteration? Which one do you want? Whichever one is funnier. Okay, so the trans <laughs> the translation is like if two demons had sex, can they have children? Okay, so that's and not clever. That's it's just not particularly a, yeah. clever. Um, but have there ever been demons, incubi and succubi, 
and from such a union can offspring be born? Okay. This is a question for demonologists okay. and, <laughs> in the and 16th per- century. All right, and so Malone thinks perhaps this question has been answered. Yep, and this is why they burst, they die in mm-hmm. exposure to sunlight, because I guess okay. vampire rules. I guess, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. So I like that part. Um, I, I like. The, I just assume they burst into flame. Too. Yeah, like it's very dramatic every time they do it. And the doctor's like, "Well, probably for the best. <laughs> Nothing to be done here." <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's the end, right? Yeah. So it turns out Malone went to hell and back, and uh, then now he's living in a he's weird living, town. He's living in the rustic Island. life yeah. until he gets over it. <laughs> and yeah, and then and then of course the closing paragraphs. As for Red Hook, it is always the same. It uh-huh. still sucks balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I can't help but notice all these immigrants are still there. Right. <laughs> so anyway, hey, you know anyway, what? By you the way, just to be absolutely clear, uh-huh. Claire and I. We are giant fans of immigrants. I love oh, immigrants. Yeah. I, I just wanted to point out that this has nothing to do with that, is that I'm sh- probably, he'd be quite pleased now to go back and find that it's all gentrified. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Pointing out this is awful. This is not good. Any Warm-o. any closing closing remarks before we get to uh, some housekeeping business? No. Our fan mail? Do you we like it? A lot. I hated it. No, I hate the story. I hate boring. the story. I like section six through like the first half of seven, and that's it. Yeah. And honestly, like the story does pick up with, on the the murder of the boat. Like I like that part. Um, I, I definitely like draining the wife. Why he had to get married and then get strangled to death? I don't like. It's still that unclear. I don't who, understand. Yeah, I will say that I don't <laughs> understand. So obviously, there's something going on there that is a whole other story, <laughs> right? And we're not privy to it, right? Which is why are you keeping this from us yeah like i guess if we're just seeing it from malone's point of view fine but but it's not even malone's point of view because we see things where malone's not there like it's an omniscient narrator yeah like selectively omniscient so obviously there's some kind of like soydem is doing something he's got some kind of pledge his soul and maybe or he's a good guy at the end with the destruction of the throne but maybe he like maybe I, li- I like we m- don't i much prefer yeah. the theory that he's like oh this is it this is my yeah, chance to be king he, of the underworld yeah, because like why now would he want to? i i just thought maybe it was like and everyone swore he the, right? releases so, his soul yeah. or something if he like uh, i don't know who knows Uh, so we have, we have some fan mail. Yeah. Would you like to hear about it? Yes. Um, so, uh, first off, uh, I have it in my fan mail section and it's like, it's not actually fan mail. It's more personal correspondence. So I've been keeping in touch with, uh, Julius from Tell No Tales and, uh, Kai Hastur, which is definitely his real name, uh, from Screen Rebels who we met in London. Yes. And every once in a while they write and every once in a while I write back and oh, it's great. Cool. And I have like two English pen pals and it's wonderful. Oh, and I just wanted to yay. brag about that. And, but the reason why I bring it up is because they are both thinking about coming to Providence for <gasps> Necronomicon. Oh, Lilla. fun. Necronomicon. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear. Necronomicon 2024. Fun. Um, you know, it's expensive, obviously, for them because they have right. to fly across an ocean. Yeah, of course. Um uh, so yeah, so hopefully they'll be there. And so, guys, here is what come. we should do: <laughs> we should rent a bit. We should Airbnb a big old house mm-hmm. in Providence. Yes, yes, we should. <laughs> yeah, and then also make sure that we, we are, can have Potsathathcon, which is the thing that you can sure, say out loud. <laughs> make sure Potsathathcon. <laughs> make sure that we are adequately dressed for oh yeah the ball. So anyway, that was my personal correspondence. Getting that out of the way. Someone named Bear says uh, that while I do a, a great job of reading the stories, uh, my accents suck, and also Claire is hilarious. Oh, so I'm going to take that Bear, as two strikes. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, his accents do suck. Yeah, my accents suck, yes. Strike one. Claire is hilarious, by implication. It doesn't say anything about you. Right. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was great. You know what? Todd's <laughs> plenty. His his britches are plenty big. Mm-hmm. Can, you can fill mine up some. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. That didn't even make sense. No. But whatever. <laughs> and then I have an electronic letter um, that I would like to read aloud in yes. its entirety. It's yes, from please. it's from someone named Jay. 
Even now, I'm unsure how I descended into such obsessive madness. I'd heard an advert obscured amongst the puerile fornication puns of the greatest generation. In less than a fortnight, I had consumed the entire catalog like a ghoul devours a fresh corpse. Claire and Todd's vociferous ruminations following each tale precipitated in me an unspeakable yearning for that next story. A yearning so strong that... The sound against the car door. It's coming in. The podcast. The podcast. That end scene. (laughs) That's great. It's fucking awesome. And Uh. P.S. He got the Wesley Willis reference. (laughs) Oh, the boy. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. No. 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 Rock over London. Rock over Chicago. Oh, Wesley Willis. Oh, oh my God. I was. I thought you meant to say Wesley Crusher. (laughs) Not Wesley Crusher. That's different. The boy. The boy. Oh my God! Yeah, awesome! Yeah. Oh, that's great! So, so yeah, so hey, we got a listener yeah. from the Greatest Generation. Fred ad. of Desoto. <laughs> yeah. So we put an ad on Greatest Generation. If you want to hear it, um, it is episode four fifty five. Buffer broth <laughs> on Greatest Generation. We should Gen. do it again. To l- well, they wanted to, us to let them know how it went. Did they? I don't know. I have to listen to it again. We should. Pretend that they did. We should. We should. <laughs> on, in regards to your Ooh, most recent I'll correspondence. I'll write them. I'll <laughs> write right. them. Damn. We've already blown our advertising budget. <laughs> of $200. Of $200. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, if you like this show, by the way, and you're not aware of The Greatest Gen, and you like Star Trek, which is probably 100% of our audience, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you should listen to Greatest Gen because they're fucking hilarious. It's and they're the inspiration for this podcast. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Very much so. Yeah. If you like this podcast, which you probably do because you've suffered through all of this thus far, (laughs) uh, if you could take a moment to rate and comment on the podcast, on the podcast catcher of your choice, that would be swell, especially if that choice is Podcast Addict because there's some dick on there who (laughs) rated us one star. And it is unconscionable. This this will not. Probably my mom. It's probably your mom or St. Joshi. One of the two. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So, um, if you'd like to, you know, write that wrong in the world, go ahead and subscribe on Podcast Addict. I think it's Android only. I've never heard of Podcast Addict. Yeah, it's our third most popular podcast platform for some reason. 